Welcome and thanks for joining us. My guest today is Rob Gordon. He's the Director of Engineering for Akamai Defense. Rob, good to have you with us. Uh, thanks for having me. And we are out of the, I guess, beginning stage, even the intermediate stage of the government and the DOD's use of commercial cloud mm -hmm. computing. And so having done this work now for some time, maybe we can start to talk about some of the lessons learned. What, what has experienced uh, in supporting DOD cloud initiatives told us so far? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I've spent a lot of time supporting the cloud initiatives from a couple of different perspectives. Uh, and I find that while we're definitely not in the beginning stages anymore, we are far from the end or from an efficient state. And I think a big part of that reason is because there's two perspectives to this. On one side, there are the mission application teams that are trying to move their workloads to the cloud. They've been doing something one way for years and years and years. They are, see this as a lot of change. There are specific as, aspects of it that are really big changes to them. And then on the other side, there are these managed service providers, these MSPs that sort of sit on top of the commercial clouds, the AWSs, the Microsoft Azures of the world, and they try to figure out ways to be able to support these applications at massive, massive scale. This was the growing pains that we had years and years ago when this was first standing up. Now we've got critical mass, we've got a lot of scale, and these MSPs are now trying to figure out, how do I do this for hundreds or thousands of apps? The floodgates are wide open, and the apps are all different. They all have different architectures, so they try to cram it all into a common solution so that they don't need a thousand people to manage their, their cloud platform. And so, so you start to see some some sort of competing interests and some you know, motivations that are not quite the same. The, the mission apps just want everything to work the way it did before, uh, but be able to be in the cloud. And the application team say, we can't have a thousand different patterns, a thousand different architectures, a thousand different sure. ways of securing things. All right, so then you've seen some challenges, some mm -hmm. pain points in going to this as they scale to multiple applications, uh, mission critical, mission related applications, yes. not just any old application. And so what do we need to know? What's your best advice for people trying to integrate all of this into some kind of a modernized cogent infrastructure, <laughs> let's say? Yeah, so it's not easy and it is because of the, the fact that we're trying to do this at scale. We've solved the basic problem. We've got the basic tools in place, but now trying to scale this up really is a challenge. In terms of advice that I would give from a mission MSP perspective for somebody trying to streamline the overall process and do this over and over again. I really think it comes down to identifying what the areas that are common are and being relentless at figuring out how to create services that make things easy for the masses without having to do thousands and thousands of little one-offs. So a couple of good examples are every mission application that moves into the cloud needs a way for users that are on the Doden to be able to connect to the cloud. There's rules. There's policy that you need to follow. Otherwise, you're sitting on, on base trying to access a system that's been moved to the cloud. The connectivity path isn't going to be there because there's rules you got to follow to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Every system has to go through that. And if every system had to do that on their own, they're now having to work with DISA to figure out how do I get connected to a BCAP or, or figure out a different way. There's all these security and scanning and break and inspect requirements You've got to, those solutions are hard to do on your own. So as an MSP, somebody trying to get a lot of apps into the cloud, focusing on those common hard problems and not shying away from them because they're hard, but tackling them because their benefit of solving that problem is multiplied by hundreds or thousands, really needs to be a focus. And it needs to be a focus with, with empathy. You can't just say, I know how to solve the problem. It's this one way or the highway, do it my way. Uh, because that just doesn't, that's not really solving the problem. That's making all these application teams feel angst that now they have to re-architect and you're just shifting the work from the MSP to all the hundreds of mission app systems. So fundamentally you have to find services that are common across many, many different applications, try to standardize those so that there's some scale to the deployment of that solution and I guess sell it in a way that people realize we're saving you a lot of problems here. Everyone has to connect. What's the difference with the application is the connection is what we're working on here. Yep, that's exactly it. And the way that it's phrased and the way that it's communicated is key. And the need to continually listen as the situation evolves, as new things happen. Connectivity is one piece. 
access to the systems, authentication, and you know, how it fits in with this zero trust um, initiative that's sweeping through the DoD and is totally tied in with the cloud is another aspect of this. Uh, all of those things, the mission application teams are on their own to try to figure out how to do it unless there's a common services layer that is empathetic to what they're trying to do and it needs to be a two-way street. So um, that's, that's a really important bit and a piece that becomes way more important now that there's not, we're not just talking about a couple dozen systems, we're talking about the DOD enterprise. Right, and so none of those services really have anything to do with the particular logic in a given application. That's right. But it would seem to save the application owners a lot of trouble because those things used to be hardwired with that application. You're saying it can be almost abstracted and then standardized. That's, that's exactly right. And those are the things that uh, the MSPs should look for, the things that everyone's going to have to do. Everyone's going to have to solve this problem. You can't have a system without authentication. You can't have a system that, like you said, regardless of the business logic, it, it doesn't matter what the app does, what the mission is, it needs to be secure, it needs to be pr protected, and the data and the logging information needs sure. to be in a standard format. So figuring out ways to do that and and communicate it as if you're making things easier, not putting arbitrary guardrails in front of people, is really the hardest part of it, but it's also the thing that adds value when you get into these, mm -hmm. these next levels of scale. And you mentioned uh, access, authentication, getting that network connection. I think of those as front-end, user-oriented. Are there similar services that could be common, made common on the back-end, such as database access or something deep in the plumbing, but nevertheless is a real cost and complexity yeah. at that scale. Yeah, absolutely. So authentication, while it is a front-end service, there's also just standard ways to be able to get into the systems that can be made common. For example, the Air Force and the Army both have enterprise SSO capabilities where a mission application that comes to the front door, they may not have a plug into the Army or Air Force or whatever DOD backend uh, that, that has all the enterprise information. They, they have to go through a process to get that. So they know how to write OIDC or SAML or build their app the way that they need to, but that's only part of the puzzle. The back end is equally important because without that, you're basically, at, you have no way of figuring out what the attributes are that you need to make your decisions. You have no way of enforcing authorization in a common way using those attributes. So there's a whole other component to that. And then you also mentioned data that these systems that are migrating to the cloud Data moving and data exchange is another huge piece of this. So whether it be database access or even system to system communication, most of these are big complex systems with a lot of trading partners that are used to being mm -hmm. able to FTP files to each other and that was fine because everything was on the Doden or even worse, mm -hmm. access another mm -hmm. database that's external to your system to be able to pull in data. You can sort of do that when you're all in a closed network, but when you talk about taking a piece of that and moving it to the cloud. Now all of a sudden you're talking about something in the cloud, which is for all bits and for, for all extents and purposes, external to mm -hmm. the DOD network and having it just directly reach into the, the Doden to talk to a database. Things like that are just fundamentally not doable in a cloud-based world for, for very good reasons. So this is another area where the MSPs provide common services to try to streamline that. And when they can't provide common services, they at least provide playbooks so that the application teams that need to do these things, they know what they need to change to be able to do it in a compliant, secure, and data aligned way. And what do you think is the next big round of challenge then as DOD keeps pushing forward with cloud and there's a lot of pushing forward they're doing right now? Yeah, so there's a lot of frontiers right now. As we get to, to different scales, the, the number of sort of dimensions for expansion really continues to, to increase. I'd say the big ones that I've personally seen from working primarily with the enterprises, with the Air Force and the Army, are the biggest one I'd say is around data. Um, we have thousands of applications that have migrated to the cloud in various forms, and all of them have unique sort of data needs for both for just network data, but also security data, and usability data, mm -hmm. and when you start thinking about taking that and applying it to the big DOD initiatives like Zero Trust, they're all about taking that information, not from an individual system, and, but as a whole across the entire enterprise, and using it to do things like determine what's normal behavior so you can block abnormal behavior. 
to determine what's slow so that you can route around slow. So you need all that data from all the different systems. So, so figuring out how to make all those different systems in the cloud initiatives talk the same language through data and then creating new common services to be able to leverage that data to do value add things, I think is another, is another big frontier. So being able to figure out patterns of user activity or sure. patterns of system to system connectivity, uh, all of those things are, are really things that I know there's a lot of action going after and, and a lot of people are trying to solve that problem. It, it's a big one. So lots of work to do yet. Lots of work to do yet, but a lot of fun problems to solve and a lot of potential. If, if we can solve this, if we can figure out how to do this, we, we can do things that we have always wanted to do that are on our 2025, 2030, 2035 roadmap that are critically important things for defense. And also just once they're working and working at scale, the, the value is one part of it, but the cost savings to the, to the DOD is another just huge piece of it. Because right now you can do it, but it's prohibitively expensive to do it system by system by system. All right, well some good thoughts some good pathways forward for DOD. Yeah. Thanks so much for being with us. My guest today has been Rob Gordon, the Director of Engineering for Akamai Defense. I'm Federal Drive host Tom Temin. You're watching Federal News Network. Let's go back to the studio now for more on the DOD Cloud Exchange.